when you define a firewall rule in Unified Network Controller for action, you can choose reject or drop. And from the tooltip, you can see the very brief description. Basically, reject will send back response, but drop will not. Yes, it's true, but a lot of details are not covered in this video. Let's dig deeper to explore the differences between these two actions. In the network controller, I already defined two firewall rules. The first one, reject VLAN 30 to VLAN 40. You can see the action is reject. And the other rule is another direction from VLAN 40 to VLAN 30. But this time, the action is drop. Let's see how these two rules are implemented differently in the backend. So in the lower part of the screen, let me SSH to the unified gateway. I mean, you may know the firewall rules in Unify Gateway are implemented using IP tables, more specifically in the filter table. So let me display the filter table, display the details, list the content. A lot of rules are returned, but only two are specific to our firewall rules. The first one, this reject. The second one, the drop. Let's see how they are implemented. Check the reject rule. All protocol, just like what we defined, it doesn't care about the in and out interface. You may be surprised because we do want to prevent from VLAN 30 to VLAN 40, right? Why here it doesn't specify the interfaces? Keep looking. You can see the source and destination again anywhere, but the magic is in this match set part. So you can see the packet must meet this condition. So it must be in this set, this BR30, which is for VLAN 30 subnets. In many of my videos, I already explained how to display the content using IPsec. So in this video, I will not waste your time. Basically, this is just the subnets for VLAN 30. And then here you can see as long as the source is in VLAN 30, as long as the destination is in VLAN 40, then it will do what? It will reject with a ICMP packet. We will discuss this later in details. Okay, keep looking about the drop rule. The beginning part is almost the same as the reject rule. Also, the source needs to to be in VLAN 40, the destination need to be VLAN 30. But you see the difference is only the action is drop or the target is drop, but it doesn't specify any reject with packet. This is interesting difference. And let's discuss why the difference and how the system will respond differently. On the screen, I show you two pages from the IP tables documents. The left side is about the reject target. You can see here it works basically the same way as drop, but it sends back an error message. And you can specify the error message using the reject with, just like what we see in the Unified Gateway, right? Even though reject supports different types of error message, for example, here it mentioned you may want to use reject with TCP reset. But in the unified gateway, it's hard coded as ICMP port unreachable. When you define the reject firewall rule, you have no way to specify the error message, right? Ubiquity decides to hard code the error message. This error message is important. The other party of the communication may respond differently just based on the different error message. And then when it comes to drop, very simple. It's simply drop without sending out any error. So now let's see how it works in action. We will break it down by three different protocols, ICMP, UDP and TCP. In the lower part of the screen, I have two Linux machines. Left one from VLAN 30, right one VLAN 40. I have launched Wireshark for both Linux machines and started capturing. Now let me try ICMP protocol first. Ping VLAN 40 from VLAN 30. I only want to ping it once. 
Okay, if you check the firewall rule, we reject VLAN 30 to VLAN 40. As you can see from the left side, the first packet from VLAN 30 to VLAN 40 is ICMP, and then it got rejected and it received a ICMP packet as answer. It's destination unreachable, port unreachable. But from the right side Wireshark, you can see the VLAN 40 machine didn't even receive the first packet. Then where the second packet came from is from the unified gateway because the firewall rule says it's reject and internally ubiquity hard coded with the ICMP part unreachable error. That's why you see the second packet. That's the effect of reject. Now let me ping the VLAN 30 from VLAN 40 and let's see what's the difference this time. Only ping it once you see the difference from the right side of the Wireshark. We only captured one ICMP packet. It's from VLAN 40 to VLAN 30. But the left side didn't receive it perfect because the firewall rule says drop, right? And the right side Linux didn't receive any response. There's no error message. That's the effect of drop firewall rule because it doesn't return error. Another difference I want to point out is for how long the ping command will wait till it finish in the two different scenarios. So let me show you again from the left side, ping right side. See, it immediately returned with the error message, port unreachable, right? Then try again from the right side. See, it waited, waited for a long time. then it finished. So we will talk about the difference in more details later. At this moment, let's explore how long exactly it waited. You may know the ICMP wait time is defined using the Linux connection tracking. In Unified Network Controller, under the security firewall rules, you have the state timeout setting. By default, it's alter. You can see the default ICMP timeout is 30 seconds, but I'm sure we didn't wait for 30 seconds. Let me measure the exact wait time by using time command. So the exact same thing, but preceded with a time command. Let me write. Okay. See, it waited for 10 seconds. Not like the left side, it immediately returned, but also not like the ICMP timeout setting, which should be 30 seconds. You may wonder why, right? The reason is in Linux, the default wait time for ICMP in ping is 10 seconds. In fact, the ping command has a parameter you can specify about the wait time. Let me run the command again. Specify, let's say I want to wait for for three seconds, okay, right? It waited for exactly three seconds. You see how the ICMP timeout works, right? Different network application can specify the wait time. If you don't, the default ICMP timeout setting in the unified gateway will be effective, which is 30 seconds. Okay, let's move on to UDP. To test the UDP, let me resolve a DNS domain name from VLAN 30. Let me use the right side VLAN 40 machine as the DNS server. Try to resolve x.com, right? It tried totally three times. Every time, it immediately returned. From Dick's side, it says the connection is refused. From the captured frame, we can see each time it got reply from the gateway. It is a ICMP port unreachable error. Okay, move on to the VLAN 40. In similar way, let me use the VLAN 30 machine as the DNS server and resolve x.com. You can see the difference already, super slow. It will try totally three times. The total runtime will be super long. Okay, it returned with the final result. No server could be reached. From the captured frame, you can see we only see three DNS packets. There were no replies. Okay, it's very straightforward. Then move on to the last one, TCP protocol. 
for TCP, let me use NC to do the testing. NC is a very handy tool. It can be used to test both TCP and UDP connections. By default, it will use TCP. Let me run this command. Basically, I'm saying let's use this VLAN 40 machine and try to connect to 1234 port number using TCP. Okay, see it immediately failed and it says connection refused. From the Wireshark, you can see the real error message, ICMP port unreachable. But we see the effect, it failed immediately because it received error message immediately. Move on to VLAN 40. Let me run a similar command and let's use the VLAN 30 machine as the target, run it. Okay, see this first packet is regular blue color, right? It's the first try. And then see the black packets which followed. They are here because they are retransmission, because the initial TCP packet got no response back so that the retransmission happened. However, the poor NC command will sit here forever because it will not get any answer back from VLAN 30 because we have the draw firewall rule right so till now you see the different behaviors between reject and the drop when it comes to three different network protocols right before ending this video let's discuss in what scenarios you want to use which action in your firewall rules so you have seen there are mainly two differences between reject and the drops behaviors first for reject it will return a error message second thing is for how long the client will give up. So for drop, it will wait for longer time, right? Based on the two different behaviors, you may want to choose different actions in your firewall rule definition. There's a very good point from many people. If they don't want the other party to know whether this IP address exists for a local machine or whether this machine open up a particular port, if it doesn't want to disclose this information at all, they choose drop because from the other side the evil party's perspective the drop behaves in the same way as the machine or the part number doesn't exist at all so basically you are not really leaking any useful information to the evil party right that's a very good point to choose drop over reject however if you read this reject ip table document you can see in some legitimate situations if the other party is your friend maybe you do want them to know okay this machine is here this part number is here but for some reason i simply don't want to provide service to you if that's the case you may want to choose reject for example here it mentioned the ident protocol as a valid case to use reject because for reject it will return an error message in some rare situations the error message itself may cause network problem for example in some denial of service attack simply because the attacked server has to return the error message the error messages may block the network that's another thing to consider however some people also argue for drop the evil party will wait there so one of the reason they want to choose drop is just want to waste the evil party's time it may sound reasonable but in real world especially for some smart tools the different difference is not very dramatic. So let me show you a map. You may know a map is very popular to scan the network to find out what parts are open. So let me use a map to compare these two different actions. From the VLAN 30 machine, let me run a map. The target is the VLAN 40 machine. Okay, it totally used about 1000 seconds. Even though the firewall rule is reject because a map tour will keep retrying and it even added delays to each retry. That's why the total runtime is still so long. Even though at the end, nothing's found, right? It still took 1000 seconds. Okay, and just to eliminate the retry effects, let me run the same command, but spend specifying max retries zero so that it won't waste time. Let's see how long it will take this time. 
See, it, it took just two or three seconds. Super fast. Now let's move on to the VLAN 40. This time, let's run the same command, but the firewall rule will be drop. Okay, start it. It failed almost immediately, took just three seconds. Even if I try to add max retries, it won't change a lot. One second, right? Just because the firewall rule is drop, won't really waste a lot of time from a better designed, smarter tool because it can decide whether to try or not. It can decide what's the timeout setting for each connection. Okay, this ends the video. Thanks for watching.